The Hawke Typhoon was a British single-seat fighter bomber, produced by Hawker Aircraft. It was intended to be a medium-high altitude interceptor, as a replacement for the Hawker Hurricane but several design problems were encountered and it never completely satisfied this requirement. The Typhoon was originally designed to mount 12 303-inch Browning machine guns and be powered by the latest 2000 horsepower engines. Its service introduction in mid-1941 was plagued with problems and for several months the aircraft faced a doubtful future. When the Luftwaffe brought the formidable Focke Wulf FW-190 into service in 1941, the Typhoon was the only rough fighter capable of catching it at low altitudes. As a result it secured a new role as a low-altitude interceptor. Through the support of pilots such as Roland Beaumont it became established in roles such as nighttime intruder and long-range fighter. From late 1942 the Typhoon was equipped with bombs and from late 1943 RP-3 ground attack rockets were added to its armory. With those weapons and its 420mm Hispano cannon, the Typhoon became one of the Second World War's most successful ground attack aircraft. Design and Development Origins Even before hurricane production began in March 1937, Sydney Cam had embarked on designing its successor. Two preliminary designs were similar and were larger than the hurricane. These later became known as the N and R because they were designed for the newly developed Napier Sabre and Rolls-Royce Vulture engines respectively. Both engines used 24 cylinders and were designed for over 2,000 horsepower. The difference between the two was primarily in the arrangement of the cylinders, an H-block in the Sabre and an X-block in the Vulture. Hawker submitted these preliminary designs in July 1937 but were advised to wait until a formal specification for a new fighter was issued. In March 1938, Hawker received from the Air Ministry Specification F-1837 for a fighter which would be able to achieve at least 400 miles per hour at 15,000 feet and specified a British engine with a two-speed supercharger. The armament fitted was to be 12 303-inch Browning machine guns with 500 rounds per gun, with a provision for alternative combinations of weaponry. Cam and his design team started formal development of the designs and construction of prototypes. The basic design of the Typhoon was a combination of traditional Hawker construction and more modern construction techniques. The front fuselage structure, from the engine mountings to the rear of the cockpit, was made up of bolted and welded duralumin or steel tubes covered with skin panels while the rear fuselage was a flush riveted, semi-monocoque structure. The forward fuselage and cockpit skinning was made up of large, removable duralumin panels, allowing easy external access to the engine and engine accessories and most of the important hydraulic and electrical equipment. The wing had a span of 41 foot 7 inch, with a wing area of 279 square feet. It was designed with a small amount of inverted gull wing bend. The inner sections had a one-degree anhedral, while the outer sections, attached just outboard of the undercarriage legs, had a dihedral of five and a half degrees. The airfoil was an NACA-22 wing section, with a thickness-to-cord ratio of 19.5% at the root tapering to 12% at the tip. The wing possessed great structural strength, provided plenty of room for fuel tanks and a heavy armament, while allowing the aircraft to be a steady gun platform. Each of the inner wings incorporated two fuel tanks, the main tanks, housed in a bay outboard and to the rear of the main undercarriage bays, had a capacity of 40 gallons, while the nose tanks built into the wing leading edges forward of the main spar had a capacity of 37 gallons each. Also incorporated into the inner wings were inward retracting landing gear with a wide track of 13 feet 6 and 3 quarters in. By contemporary standards, the new design's wing was very thick, similar to the hurricane before it. Although the Typhoon was expected to achieve over 400 miles per hour in level flight at 20,000 feet, 
the thick wings created a large drag rise and prevented higher speeds than the 410 miles per hour at 20,000 feet achieved in tests. The climb rate and performance above that level was also considered disappointing. When the typhoon was dived at speeds of over 500 miles per hour, the drag rise caused buffeting and trim changes. These compressibility problems led to CAM designing the Typhoon II, later known as the Tempest, which used much thinner wings with a laminar flow airfoil. Prototypes The first flight of the first Typhoon prototype, P5212, made by Hawker's chief test pilot Philip Lucas from Langley was delayed until 24 February 1940 because of the problems with the development of the Sabre engine. Although unarmed for its first flights, P-5212 later carried 12 303 in Brownings, set in groups of six in each outer wing panel. This was the armament fitted to the first 110 Typhoons, known as the Typhoon IA. P-5212 also had a small tail fin, triple exhaust stubs and no wheel doors fitted to the center section. On 9 May 1940 the prototype had a mid-air structural failure at the join between the forward fuselage and rear fuselage, just behind the pilot seat. Philip Lucas could see daylight through the split but instead of bailing out, landed the Typhoon and was later awarded the George Medal. On 15 May the Minister of Aircraft Production, Lord Beaverbrook, ordered that resources should be concentrated on the production of five main aircraft types. As a result, development of the Typhoon was slowed, production plans were postponed and test flying continued at a reduced rate. As a result of the delays the second prototype, P-5216, first flew on 3 May 1941. P-5216 carried an armament of four belt-fed 20mm Hispano Mk2 cannon, with 140 rounds per gun and was the prototype of the Typhoon Ib series. In the interim between construction of the first and second prototypes, the Air Ministry had given Hawker an instruction to proceed with the construction of 1,000 of the new fighters. It was felt that the Vulture engine was more promising, so the order covered 500 tornadoes and 250 typhoons, with the balance to be decided once the two had been compared. It was also decided that because Hawker was concentrating on hurricane production, the tornado would be built by Avro and Gloucester would build the typhoons at Hucklecote. Avro and Gloucester were aircraft companies within the Hawker Siddeley Group. As a result of good progress by Gloucester, the first production Typhoon R7576 was first flown on 27 May 1941 by Michael Daunt just over three weeks after the second prototype. Operational Service Introduction The Typhoon becomes a low-level interceptor in 1941. The Spitfire vs. which equipped the bulk of fighter command squadrons were outclassed by the new Fock Wolf FW-190 and suffered many losses. The Typhoon was rushed into service with nose. 56 and 609 squadrons in late 1941, to counter the FW-190. This decision proved to be a disaster and several typhoons were lost to unknown causes and the Air Ministry began to consider halting production of the type. In August 1942, Hawker's second test pilot, Ken Seth Smith, while deputizing for chief test pilot Philip Lucas, carried out a straight and level speed test from Hawker's test center at Langley, and the aircraft broke up over Thorpe, killing the pilot. Sidney Cam and the design team immediately ruled out pilot Ara, which had been suspected in earlier crashes. Investigation revealed that the elevator mass balance had torn away from the fuselage structure and intense flutter developed. The structural failed and the tail broke away. Modification 286 to the structure and the control runs partially solved the structural problem. Mod 286, which involved fastening external fish plates or reinforcing plates around the tail of the aircraft and eventually internal strengthening was a partial remedy, and there were still failures right up to the end of the typhoon's service life. 
The Sabre engine was also a constant source of problems, notably in colder weather, when it was very difficult to start, and it suffered problems with wear of its sleeve valves and the resulting high oil consumption. The 24-cylinder engine also produced a very high-pitched engine note, which pilots found very fatiguing. The Typhoon did not begin to mature as a reliable aircraft until the end of 1942, when its excellent qualities, seen from the start by S. L. Roland Beaumont of 609 Squadron, became apparent. Beaumont had worked as a Hawker production test pilot while resting from operations and had stayed with Seth Smith, having his first flight in the aircraft at that time. During late 1942 and early 1943 the Typhoon squadrons were based on airfields near the south and southeast coasts of England and, alongside two Spitfire 12 squadrons, counted the Luftwaffe S. Tip and Run low-level nuisance raids shooting down a score or more bomb-carrying FW-190s. Typhoon squadrons kept at least one pair of aircraft on standing patrols over the south coast, with another pair kept at readiness throughout daylight hours. These sections of typhoons flew at 500 feet or lower, with enough height to spot and then intercept the incoming enemy fighter bombers. The typhoon finally proved itself in this role, for example, while flying patrols against these low-level raids. 486 Squadron claimed 20 fighter bombers, plus three bombers shot down between mid-October 1942 and mid-July 1943. The first two Messerschmitt Mi-210 fighter bombers to be destroyed over the British Isles fell to the guns of typhoons in August 1942, during a daylight raid by the Luftwaffe on London on 20 January 1943, four BF-109 G4S and one FW-190A4 of JG-26 were destroyed by typhoons. As soon as the aircraft entered service, it was apparent the profile of the typhoon resembled a FW-190 from some angles, which caused more than one friendly fire incident with Allied anti-aircraft units and other fighters. This led to typhoons first being marked up with all white noses, and later with high-visibility black and white stripes under the wings. A precursor of the markings applied to all Allied aircraft on D-Day. Switched to ground attack by 1943, the RAF needed a ground attack fighter more than a pure fighter and the Typhoon was suited to the role. The powerful engine allowed the aircraft to carry a load of up to two 1,000-pound bombs, equal to the light bombers of only a few years earlier. The bomb-equipped aircraft were nicknamed bomb foons and entered service with no. 181 Squadron, formed in September 1942. From September 1943, Typhoons were also armed with four 60-pound RP-3 rockets under each wing. In October 1943, no. 181 Squadron made the first Typhoon rocket attacks. Although the rocket projectiles were inaccurate and took considerable skill to aim and allow for ballistic drop after firing, the sheer firepower of just one Typhoon was equivalent to a destroyer's broadside. By the end of 1943, 18 rocket-equipped Typhoon squadrons formed the basis of the RAF Second Tactical Air Force ground attack arm in Europe. In theory, the rocket rails and bomb racks were interchangeable, in practice, to simplify supply. Some second tough typhoon squadrons used the rockets only, while other squadrons were armed exclusively with bombs. By the Normandy landings in June 1944, two tough had 18 operational squadrons of Typhoon IBs, while Air Defence of Great Britain had a further nine. The aircraft proved itself to be the most effective RAF tactical strike aircraft. On interdiction raids against communications and transport targets deep in northwestern Europe prior to the invasion and in direct support of the Allied ground forces after D-Day, 
a system of close liaison with the ground troops was set up by the RAF and Army. RAF radio operators in vehicles equipped with VHFRT traveled with the troops close to the front line and called up typhoons operating in a cab rank, which attacked the targets, marked for them by smoke shells fired by mortar or artillery, until they were destroyed. Against some of the Wehrmacht's heavier tanks, the rockets needed to hit the thin-walled engine compartment or the tracks to have any chance of destroying or disabling the tank. Analysis of destroyed tanks after the Normandy battle showed a hit rate for the air-fired rockets of only 4%. In Operation Goodwood, the second tactical air force claimed 257 tanks destroyed. A total of 222 were claimed by Typhoon pilots using rocket projectiles. Once the area was secured, the British Operational Research Section 2 analysts could confirm only 10 out of the 456 knocked out German AFVs found in the area were attributable to typhoons using rocket projectiles. At Mortain, in the Falaise pocket, a German counter-attack that started on 7 August threatened Patton's breakout from the beachhead. This counter-attack was repulsed by 2nd Tactical Air Force Typhoons and the 9th USAAF. During the course of the battle, pilots of the 2nd Tactical Air Force and 9th USAAF claimed to have destroyed a combined total of 252 tanks. Only 177 German tanks and assault guns participated in the battle and only 46 were lost, of which 9 were verified as destroyed by typhoons. 4% of the total claimed the effect on morale of the German troops caught up in a typhoon RP and cannon attack were decisive, with many tanks and vehicles being abandoned, in spite of superficial damage such that a signal from the German Army's Chief of Staff stated that the attack had been brought to a standstill by 1300, due to the employment of fighter bombers by the enemy, and the absence of our own air support. The 20mm cannon also destroyed a large number of support vehicles, laden with fuel and ammunition for the armored vehicles. On 10 July at Mortain, flying in support of the U.S. 30th Infantry Division, typhoons flew 294 sorties in the afternoon that day, firing 2,088 rockets and dropping 80 short tons of bombs. They engaged the German formations while the U.S. 9th Air Force prevented German fighters from intervening. Dwight D. Eisenhower, the Supreme Allied Commander, said of the typhoons, the chief credit in smashing the enemy's spearhead, however, must go to the rocket-firing typhoon aircraft of the Second Tactical Air Force. The result of the strafing was that the enemy attack was effectively brought to a halt, and a threat was turned into a great victory. Another form of attack carried out by typhoons was cloak and dagger operations using intelligence sources to target German HQs. One of the most effective of these was carried out on 24 October 1944, when 146 Typhoon Wing attacked a building in Dordrecht, where senior members of the German 15th Army staff were meeting. 17 staff officers and 36 other officers were killed in the operations of the 15th. Army were adversely affected for some time afterwards. On 24 March 1945, over 400 typhoons were sent on several sorties each, to suppress German anti-aircraft guns and Wehrmacht resistance to Operation Varsity. The Allied crossing of the Rhine that involved two full divisions of 16,600 troops and 1,770 gliders sent across the river. On 3 May 1945, the Cap Park owner, the Thielbeck and the Deutschland, large passenger ships in peacetime now in military service, were sunk in four attacks by RAF Hawker Typhoon 1Bs of No. 83 Group RAF, 2nd Tactical Air Force, the 1st by 184 Squadron, 2nd by 198 Squadron led by Wing Commander John Robert Baldwin, 
the third by 263 Squadron led by Squadron Leader Martin T. S. Rumbold and the fourth by 197 Squadron led by Squadron Leader K. J. Harding. The top scoring Typhoon Ace was Group Captain J. R. Baldwin Wing and 123 Wing, who claimed 15 aircraft shot down from 1942 to 1944. Some 246 Axis aircraft were claimed by Typhoon pilots during the war. 3,317 Typhoons were built, almost all by Gloucester. Hawker developed what was originally an improved Typhoon II, but the differences between it and the MKI were so great that it was effectively a different aircraft, and was renamed the Hawker Tempest. Once the war in Europe was over Typhoons were quickly removed from frontline squadrons. By October 1945 the Typhoon was no longer in operational use. With many of the wartime Typhoon units such as 198 Squadron being either disbanded or renumbered, captured Typhoons by 1943, with its change of role to ground attack, the Typhoon was constantly operating over enemy territory. Inevitably some flyable examples were to fall into German hands. The first Typhoon to be flown by the Luftwaffe was EJ-956 Sarai of 486 Squadron. On 23 March 1943, two aircraft flown by F. O. Smith and F. S. Mawson were on a rhubarb over France. Just as they were crossing the coast at low altitude, Mawson's Typhoon was hit by light flak. He managed to belly land in a field near Caney Barville, but the aircraft was captured before he could destroy it. The Typhoon was repaired and test flown at Reachlin, and later served as T9 plus GK with Zircus Rosarius. EJ-956 overturned and was written off during a force landing near Meckelfeld on 10 August 1944. On 14 February 1944, another typhoon was captured and later flown in Zircus Rosarius. JP-548 of 174 Squadron Force landed after engine failure near Blois, France. The pilot, F. O. Prodau evaded capture. This typhoon crashed at Rian on 29 July 1944, killing Feldwebel Gold.